Great, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, today we're going to talk about decoupled open search. So really quickly, who am I? I'm Adam, one of the lead developers at Previous Next. I've been doing Drupal since about 2010 and um, mostly involved in Australian government and higher education uh, projects. So today we're going to cover a, um, the architecture of the project that I'm talking about and why we sort of chose it, um, some of the search API, open search, sort of Drupal set up for it, and then um, a deep dive into the React technology or front-end technology that we used. And that's my son, my two sons. <laughs> Cool, so first up, what actually is open search? Well, it's basically elastic search, and I've probably at least one time accidentally call it elastic search. Um, it was forked from elastic search in 2021, and it's developed and managed by AWS. Um, the good news is all the sort of documentation, queries, stack overflow questions, all of that that you'll find for elastic search pretty much apply to open search. Um, it was forked from elastic search seven, so. Um, you're all good there. And it's an AWS managed service, so you're able to run and scale a highly available open search cluster without really having to worry too much about how you manage it. <coughs> so why did we go with the stack? Well, the we got a set of designs and they were completely full to the brim with search interfaces. All of them had different levels of content, filtering, sorting, rendering, multiple search apps on the same page, all this sort of thing. We even had stuff like landing pages where the filters weren't actually attached to the results. Um, so a lot of different moving parts going on. And these are some of the examples of the, um, the design. So we have landing pages, as I said, <clears throat> with the filters detached. We had global search results and all sorts of different things going on. Um, we also needed to be able to have multiple apps on the same page and be able to apply filters to just one of them or maybe all of them. So how did we go about doing that? Well, we went to um, we went with React apps that were embedded in Drupal pages. Um, we like to call that partially decoupled. Uh, we wanted to keep using Drupal's mighty CMS with all the fun tools that we know and love, the site building, the workflows, the out-of-the-box editor experience and just building what we know and love. But we also wanted to be able to iterate fast on these search apps um, and be able to build a design system that we could then use directly in our apps. We wanted really, really fast um, search um, and we wanted to avoid round trips to Drupal for querying and filtering and sorting. And uh, it also allowed us to avoid using views entirely if anyone's ever use views for search interfaces, you'll know they're a bit of a nightmare um, and theming can be really, really rough. So we went with the Search API Open Search module, um, which our very own Kim Pepper wrote. So thanks very much, Kim. Um, this just implements a, the backend integration for Open Search, um, mapping your entity fields to the JSON documents that then get indexed in Open Search and manages all your index settings um, and ma field mappings and all that sort of thing. Essentially, it's going to allow you to turn a piece of content into a JSON document, and then that gets sent to Open Search to ind get ind indexed. <clears throat> Sorry. So, anyone that's used Search API, Search API before would be pretty familiar with this kind of screen. This is where you're configuring your fields for your index, and you're adding all your content entity f fields down there. You're choosing which field types um, to use for each of the fields, how they're boosted, and those field types are going to then um, determine how that content is indexed. Um, you have things like full, te full text, ngram, edge ngram for full text searching, and we'll cover that a little bit later, or string fields for um, term filtering or alphabetic so uh, alphabetical sorting. <coughs> So <clears throat> I quickly want to cover some indexing tips and tricks and how to get really relevant results because often um, when you're implementing these kind of search interfaces, relevancy is one of the key criteria to get right. So yeah, we want to provide relevant results with minimal developer overhead and we want to also be able to provide contextual filters to users so they can filter those results and get um, you know, more drilled down what, what they're actually looking for. So we went with a <clears throat> aggregated field. So 
in with Search API, you can configure a single field that aggregates multiple fields into one. In this case here, on the right there, you can see we're concatenating the values of the title, the body, and the summary <clears throat> into one field, and that's what we're actually going to use for full, full text search. We use the edge engram data type, um, and we'll cover a little bit more on what that actually is in a second. Um, but basically, it helps us tokenize up values and um, makes content more searchable. And then also at query time, we boost other fields um, in the index uh, for better results. So again, we'll cover more on that in a bit of a, in a little bit. So what actually is an engram? Well, the engram tokenizer will break up your content into words, and then it creates engrams out of those words at a given length. So if we say Drupal South with a length of two, it's going to create all those little engrams for us to search over. So you can kind of think of engrams as like a sliding window that moves across the words and creates little sequences of characters. So on the term names for filtering, it may seem a bit counterintuitive. Usually you'd use an ID to filter um, your content, makes it more robust. But using term, uh, term names means we can use open search aggregation queries. So basically what that allows you to do is um, get a list of possible filter values directly from um, a single query and then you can use that to render out your filters. Again, we're gonna show more on that in a second. The caveat there you might be already thinking is, well, if I change a term name, that term name then has to be updated on everything that's tagged against that term. Um, thankfully, Search API actually has a little setting that, makes, uh, that gives you that for free um, called track changes in reference entities. And it works flawlessly. Haven't really had any issues there whatsoever. So this is an example of an aggregation query in OpenSearch. So we're saying, give me an aggregation called organization size and aggregate on the field organization size. That's going to respond with a organization size um, aggregation. Again, you can have multiple aggregations in one. Um, and that's going to list, uh, give you back a list of what um, OpenSearch called, calls buckets with um, the term name and also a count of how many documents are tagged with that term. So really handy, handy for building filters. And you can use these um, aggregation queries alongside filters as well. So you can build up contextual filters using this um, pattern. And really praying to the demo gods that this works, but this is a little demo of our filters in action, or the whole app in action really. It's gonna work, watch this. It's a live demo. Um, so you can see as I go back to um, one, yeah, one really good thing to note here is as I go back to filters that I've already applied, the response is almost instant, and that's using uh, a library called TanStat Query, which we're going to cover more in a second. I'm going to, whoops, play that really, no I'm not, never mind. Um, basically though, as you return to uh, filters that you've already applied, the, the response is almost instant because you're just getting cached results based on the um, query. So how do we get relevant results? We said, okay, we're aggregating all of our content into a single field, but what if we want to say boost content higher if it's got the search term in the title field or some other field? We can um, index those fields that we want to boost separately. Um, we can index them as full text, and then in Search API's um, field interface that we saw before, we can select a boost value for that field. <clears throat> and then we can use um, an open search uh, query called a should. And we can combine should and must queries into our search, uh, into our search query, and that'll basically give us more relevant results. So having a look at a full query, um, if you didn't know, when you query open search, you just post a bunch of JSON at it, and it gives you um, JSON back. Um, but we'll go through this in a little bit more detail. So up the top, we've got our must query. So every um, thing that returns from the search, um, search query, we're going to only match things that have COVID in the aggregated field. And in this case, we've called it text. That's what that little key there is. Uh, the next part, the next chunk of this is filtering on a term name. Um, this, in this case, it's the resource type field and we're filtering on policy, policy and legislation. And lastly, we have the should uh, chunk, which is what I was mentioning before. 
This is going to say boost um, any documents with the word COVID in the title full text um, field. And what that's going to do is increase the relevancy of results that match that, but it's not going to filter out anything that doesn't match. So really, really handy for getting more relevant results. Cool, so that kind of finishes. Oh, no, there's one more. <laughs> um, so we want to use a query builder. If you were like, what the hell is that big giant JSON blob? It might be pretty hard to handcraft that yourself. So we use a query builder called Elastic Builder. Again, this work, works fine with OpenSearch. Um, this basically lets you build up a um, object that represents your query and then um, directly um, cast that to a JSON object that you can post directly to OpenSearch. Um, all the links for the, that are on the slides, by the way, will be at the end, um, and these slides will be uploaded, so um, you can get them from there. Um, so looking at what a query builder function might look like, this is basically what we do. It might be a little bit hard to read, but um, in essence, we build up a list of filters, um, we add on our full text query, um, we add our should fields, and then we use that library, um, the request body search function from that library, pass all that stuff to it, and then just call to JSON, and that gives us the uh, the request, uh, the query object that we just post directly to OpenSearch. Okay, that ends the uh, little tips and tricks part. So how do we actually get these apps into Drupal? <clears throat> well, we just use Layout Builder, and this is an example of a landing page um, that we've got on our site. Um, we've got two blocks embedded in the landing page. Um, we've got the header block at the top, that's actually got a search app embedded into it, which is showing all the filters using those aggregation queries. Then we've got another search app down the bottom, which is showing our results. In fact, that's also using an aggregation query to show those little um, buttons filters or pill filters, as we like to call them. So these are just two block plugins um, that we've got in our project. And they are very, very simple. So we just have a build function, a little bit of config, um, and an Essentially, all we do is give a um, unique ID to our application. We use Drupal settings and we marry up the ID with the ID that we pass into Drupal settings. We pass in some properties that are going to be injected into our React app. So that's the heading, description, and index URL. And then we attach a Drupal library. And that's just going to be a very, very thin wrapper around uh, Drupal behaviors Drupal settings and actually React itself. So this is an example of one of our library JavaScript files, literally just three lines or one line really. Um, we use this React component renderer, which is a little custom library we've built. Um, I won't show you the code in that, but it's pretty simple. All it does is take that ID, marries up with that Drupal settings <clears throat> that we saw before that was injected via the block plugin, and then passes those settings as properties to a React app. And in this case, our React app is called All Resources App. So on that note, uh, we're going to dive into the React tech. So this is getting into the more complex part of the talk. Um, you definitely don't have to understand what's going on there. We're going to dive into each part um, individually, but this is an, just showing an example of that full React app um, that we were passing through into our library and marrying up with those Drupal settings that were embedded through the block plugin that was embedded in Layout Builder. So yeah, we're going to cover all these technologies. Um, just a side note, I'm not actually a front-end developer, um, but I have learned a hell of a lot on this project. And um, because of how we've actually set up all these applications, um, I'm actually able to work on these apps without being a total expert. But big shout out to Jack Taranto for setting up this whole architecture. So first up, we talked about TanStack Query. This used to be called React Query, but now it works with Vue and other frameworks. Um, this is how we get that really nice, um, those cached results um, in it when we're filtering. It's just a really powerful asynchronous state management tool for React, Vue, and other frameworks. Um, out of the box, it provides um, really good caching um, via query keys. It'll do things like dedupe requests. So if you have multiple apps on the same page, that hit the same API. It's not going to do two requests, it's just going to do one. Has auto retry for errors, and you can do really nifty things like updating stale results in the background. So if you do a post and you've got an updated list of results, you don't have to then, again, um, query those results to update your app on the front end. You can just do that in one, uh, in one callback and it's all handled for you. 
Um, it's also got really good error handling as well. So this is an example of using uh, Tansat query and actually hitting um, open search. So up the top we've got, um, we're getting our index URL and our request body from context providers, which we're gonna cover in a little bit. Um, and then lastly, we're using the use query hook, which is from the Tansat query library. Um, that has two arguments. The first is a query key, and you might be thinking, hang on, the, there's an argument called query key in that um, array. That's actually something we pass in as a property, and then we add the index URL and request body. That gives us a unique query for the um, combination of filters and full text search, which means our results are really nicely cached. The second argument to the use query uh, function, uh, hook is our callback, which is going to actually return the data. Um, and we'll have a look at what that looks like now. So this is our elastic fetch callback that we're using in the use query hook. Um, we literally just get the index URL, the request body from the query key directly, and just post that um, straight to open search and then return the results. Cool. All right, so <clears throat> context providers. Um, if you saw that big application that I saw that I showed you, almost everything in there was a context provider. I mentioned the index URL and the request body before they were coming from context providers. But essentially they allow you to access data, um, any type of data, from any component in your tree that's underneath the given context provider, and you don't have to pass properties all the way through. Um, you can use them for really simple data, like a string, which is an index URL, or you can use them for much more complex stuff, like a whole set of search results. Um, and Eric is doing a talk on understanding React, ho React hooks um, later today at 20 past one, I think, and he'll cover um, this kind of thing in more detail. But we can have a look at our, um, context, one of our context providers here, which is the index URL provider. <clears throat> this wraps um, a huge number of our components. Basically, we're just given an index URL. When we call uh, use index URL, we basically just get the index URL back. We don't have to pass that all, the way, all around in our um, application. And that previous example that I showed you of the query that was hitting uh, open search, I knew I'd do it at least once, um, that was actually in our search results context provider, which I won't show you because it's too big for the screen. In fact, everything in red here is a context provider. Um, that middle all resources layout component is the only thing that's actually rendering anything in our application. Everything else is providing um, data that is then used inside that all resources layout component. So context provider is very, very, very useful. And using a context provider is literally just this. We go use search results and we get our search results back and any of our components underneath our, um, that context provider. Cool. So next up is getting to the sort of more <laughs> limit, uh, the higher limit of my knowledge on this topic, but I'm gonna try and do it some justice. Um, so Redux is our global store for our data. Um, in essence, Redux has one store to rule them all, hence the Death Star. Um, but our initial prototypes on this project actually went, screw that, we're gonna have one store for each app. Um, that's gonna allow us to have independent search apps and we're not gonna step on each other's toes if we didn't want to. Um, turns out, yeah, don't do that, it's a bad idea. So instead we use something called slices, which comes from Redux Toolkit. So slices basically allow you to split that store up and you can think of it as slices of a, of a pie. Um, split up the state um, into little features or applications um, and that gives you actions and reduces to uh, fire just on those apps. So it allows us to manage that state like we needed to for um, each app independently. And again, Jack, thank you so much for for setting all this up. Um, this is kind of how you can think of a slice. So you got your, your global store, one store to rule them all, the big Death Star. It's cut up into, into separate slices for each application. And then those slices can be used in um, conjunction with a context provider to um, pass down that, those actions and reduces in state into the lower level components. Um, and they can all work 
nicely and compartmentalized. So this might be an example of one of your apps. You have this slice provider, um, which we'll cover more in depth soon. You reuse the same um, components in there, the results per page, the pager, filters, whatever. Um, and that's just going to work on just the, the slice um, and, the, and that's passed into the slice provider. It's not going to um, affect anything else. So creating a slice looks something like this. You give it a name and a bunch of initial state. So in our search apps, this might be things like the current page, how many results per page, some of the filters that are applied. You could have filters applied by default. Um, and reduces, which are essentially stuff that you're going to apply to that state. And of course, those reducers can be reused across multiple slices, but they're only going to be, um, you're going to be able to apply them only to one slice at a time if you want to. So setting up the store, we just implement, uh, we just combine all our reducers from our slices and then create our store from that. And how this is all wired up and the real magic behind all this is this slice provider component. So this is a little custom context provider. It basically wraps all of our app's components. You pass it one of those slices and then it's going to give you back actions and state for the app to use. Um, that link there is to the much more detailed uh, blog post by Jack, which I highly, highly recommend you um, give it a read. Um, it's really kind of the bread and butter of what makes this whole project hum. Um, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So next up, how do we test all this stuff? Testing is super important. Um, it's pretty hard to test all this stuff um, end to end, but we can do um, some pretty amazing unit testing uh, combining these <clears throat> libraries. So we use Jest, which is a kind of a unit testing framework. Um, we use the React testing library um, for in, in Jest for uh, assertions and rendering and so forth. And we use something called MSW or Mock Service Worker, which allows us to set up mock responses uh, for OpenSearch. So this is an example of a test for our search app. So uh, we render the app up the top and notice we pass it a mock index URL. Um, that's going to help us um, in a minute with mock service worker. Uh, we wait for our filters and our results to render and then we just match it against a snapshot and that snapshot is stored in the code base. So things like CI or other developers will be uh, running these tests against the same snapshot so very easy to know if anything broke. And they're very fast. Cool, and then the mock service worker. So this is where we basically set up, um, yeah, the MSW. Um, so we're saying in this example, we're intercepting post requests to slash mock slash all resources. It is regex, so it's a little bit hard to read, but um, that was why we set up that mock index URL uh, previously. Then we're saying if there's a AGS key in the body, if you remember way back at the start of the talk, we talked about open search aggregations. That's the key that's going to um, come through in a query to build those filters. Um, we say if there's an aggregation key in the query body, we return our uh, mock ags. It's just a JSON file. Otherwise, we just return our results. And that's going to allow that test to then render the app with mock results without hitting like a real open search instance. Um, and yeah. Cool. So tying it all together under the hood. Uh, we had our content index by Drupal with Search API. We have our index that's queried by React, the front end. Um, so how does that actually all tie together and how do we keep it really fast and most probably most importantly, secure? So we use OpenSearch on Skipper. So Skipper provisions some credentials for Drupal that um, can then write to the, the index. And then our React apps go via a proxy and uh, execute searches against OpenSearch, they can, uh, but the front end can only read um, that uh, via that proxy, so it has no write access at all. So we have the proxy uh, for a, a, a number of reasons. Um, it makes it really, really fast because the, um, the instance almost looks like it's local. So we have like a slash API proxy 
That's what React is hitting. That then gets proxied onto OpenSearch. Um, it's secure. The front end can't write anything to the index. Only Drupal can. Um, and we don't have to expose any OpenSearch endpoints or anything um, on Skipper. Cool, and if you want to try that stack out yourself, we've got a open search um, image that you can spin up in Docker or anything else. Um, and then all you need is a little um, bit of Nginx config to proxy your API URL onto your open search instance. Cool, so recapping all of that, we use search API open search, as I said. We inject config into our React apps via block plugins that are embedded, embedded via Layout Builder. Uh, we query uh, via our React apps using a read-only um, proxy that hits OpenSearch, and we smooth all that developer experience out with some pretty nifty React tooling. Here's a giant list of links. And that's it. Any questions, ladies and gentlemen? You there. I think there's a microphone coming. Uh, we are using the managed AWS service. Yeah. It's hosted on Skipper, yeah. So Skipper will Essentially, you can, if you're using Skipper, you can provision um, one of these open search clusters really easily and you get all that tooling, um, like I said, um, just out of the box, yeah. So it is using AWS's service under the hood, yeah. But it does things like provision the writer credentials, all that kind of stuff for you. Yeah. As you said, <coughs> As you said in the presentation, you use itching.gram. And um, what if you have a requirement that a full phrase needs to go above all search results? How do you handle it? Because with itching.gram, it might have more instances in another entry where it's not a full phrase. Yeah, so we don't tokenize the query string. I think that's the most important part. So when we're actually doing the query, we you have to um, specifically set an analyzer on your query string so it doesn't break those tokens up. Um, but yeah, your question was how do you how do you um, how boost do you ensure that full, full phrases phrase goes yeah. above everything else? Yeah, I guess you'd have to index that separately. Um, as I said, you can yeah you can set up as many fields as you want, right? So you might you might have your main text that's fully um, tokenized, and then you can boost separate fields or separate strings. Um, yeah, with different fields, yeah. The second question is, is uh, one thing I've noticed in Solar at least, uh, boost values isn't the only thing that boosts it. There's behind the scene tools that boost it like normalization and other things yeah. which you can't directly control in Search API. Yeah. How do you handle it in OpenSearch? Yeah, so there is, um, I did actually forget to mention that, things like the number of instances of, this, of the search term, so if a piece of content has the word COVID and the title and the body and all over the place, um, that's going to get boosted higher, um, yeah, as you said, in, internally um, in the black box, so to speak. Um, yeah, it's a good question, and it, it is something that you'd have to iterate on a lot. I think there is always a lot of fine-tuning and fiddling with, with little knobs and things like that to get relevant results, like, really precise. But I think um, as soon as we added that should... Um, the should boosting, um, our clients were much happier with the, the sort of results they were getting. And, and we've only just started sort of diving into that stuff. So I think, yeah, there's definitely a lot more that we could do there for sure. And the final question is, is does facets work with OpenSearch as well? Yeah, I think aggregations are basically like a one-to-one -to, -one to facets, yeah. Gibran. Um, have you tried direct field boosting instead of should boosting? Uh, what's the difference between should boosting and the direct field boosting in Elastic or OpenSearch? Uh, nope, haven't tried that. But um, 
Yeah, I think this should help you sort of boost stuff at, a query, at the query time as well. So you can have different like boosts for different queries depending on your requirements, yeah. Sorry, how do you uh, handle um, synonyms and stuff like that? You spoke yes. about search contexts and understanding what person is after. Yeah. Is, how does it kind of work? Yeah, so Lee um, actually recently built, uh, Lee Rollins built um, synonym support into the module. So you can configure it at an index level um, if you want, but there's also more dynamic stuff that you can do, um, which we're implementing where um, the, the problem with OpenSearch, as far as I can see, is that you need to index the synonyms as settings on the index. So they have to be, um, they can't, yeah, as far as I can tell, well, I haven't dove, dove into it too much more than this, but you can, yeah, you index the synonyms at the index level, and then when you query, um, it'll just automatically pick those synonyms up and use them, yeah. Um, there's also stuff like auto search suggestions and things like that that you can take, take advantage of. I just wanted to ask about the architecture and security of the cluster endpoint. So you yep. are um, using a query builder to uh, create like a payload from the React, right? And then you post it to a proxy. And yep. I'm just thinking, like, um, does it expose? Where does the proxy live? Is it in the middleware of the React or? No, it's an Nginx app on our cluster. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. And then it kind of forwards the back to That's right. behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, in the regards to the uh, search API attachments, uh, is the response the same in terms of you know having the files data extracted and uh, being indexed? Uh, is the response the same when it comes to the file, files being attached? I yeah. assume so. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tested that module out, um, but yeah, as long as the that indexes uh, that extracts the that's the, you're talking about when it so extracts, API attachments, yeah. yeah, extracts the PDF content and indexes that. And indexes, yeah. yeah, I can't see any reason why that wouldn't work, yeah. Right. Thanks. Cool. Cool. If um, you have any other questions later on, I'm pretty easy to spot, so just, yeah, hit me up. Thank you.